what's happening? My name is Jeff Klein, and we're here at Nine Lives in Austin, Texas. It's a house that we converted into a home studio environment. We have three friends of ours coming by today. All of them are brass players. We're going to hang out, discuss some uh, experiences that we've had on the road and in the studio, and then we're going to record some music in here. Come check it out. inspired you guys to pick up the horn oh, way back when way back when yeah um uh, band just band? like band class was yeah. cool. i liked it i went to a, um, a middle school in which you had to do every elective uh-huh. um like every single one of them no matter what shop and art and home ec and everything like everyone had to try them all and band uh-huh. stuck because i was in church choir with uh my whole life i've been in church choir and then once it got to a music thing in school, it, it stuck with me. So I did percussion ensemble and euphonia yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Very cool. What about you guys? Same thing? I was, uh, yeah, it was kind of the beginning of actually choosing an instrument to play was, was band, fourth grade, mm-hmm. whatever, you know. Fourth grade? Yep, fourth grade. Pick instruments. That's, that's when you start to play horns is the fourth grade. Fourth yeah. grade? I started in the sixth grade. Am I late? Yeah, huh. yeah you're late. <laughs> <laughs> you're never two everybody. years behind. <laughs> that's one that's thing I love about, about people who play brass instruments is that uh, so many actually learn in school. It's mm-hmm. just never the case with rock and roll stuff, you yeah. know? It's true. I think you, you, know, you listen to records and you're like, I want to I want to be that guitar shredder, but we don't, with horns, it doesn't work that way. Well, yeah, I had a lot, yeah. I mean, dad, yeah. my dad was a trumpet player and a jazz musician, so I had a lot of that. Mm. I was inspired by the time fourth grade come, to came around that, to know that I didn't want to play trumpet. Yeah, I'd already, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, already only not because my dad didn't kill that shit, yeah. but just like like I don't know like the, I didn't like the way my chops felt, mm-hmm. right? so I knew it wasn't gonna be that. You knew at nine years old that you didn't like pretty much. The way your yeah, chops like, felt. I was just like no, every time I picked it up, I was like, no, that's no. Yeah, I, want that. mm-hmm. I still feel like that. Yeah, I tried the saxophone <laughs> in the sixth grade and felt the, that way. It was that just way? like yeah. I had like biting it. You have to like bite the saxophone or mm-hmm. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Like, it shows how much, shows how what, you, what I know. I think, yeah. why don't you bite it to get it to play? I don't know. <laughs> it's the same beginnings of that. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Do you have any personal like superstitions or anything, like rituals do before you play or record? Brushing my teeth. Brush your teeth? <laughs> nope. Yeah. Clean, clean it. Clean it. Clean my horn. Mm-hmm. Just to, just to like wipe it off and start fresh. It feels like a brand new car or something. Yeah. But yeah, no, not really, not rituals. Just, yeah, I just show up late. You just show up late. And hungry. <laughs> late, 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 hungry, and upset. ask if there's coffee. No, I'm just yeah, that's, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, that's, like that's what, what he said, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's a horn player thing. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> brother? <laughs> Dad? What? A, what's a? What's a, what's a high and a low? Professional high and low. Being a musician. Being a musician? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the highs are just like. Just one for you. What's like? What's a professional high point? In your professional career? high point: seeing the world, yeah. just like in continuing to see it and like marking states off of my little list of yeah. places, you know. And that's a high. Lows are just like really slogging it, you know, playing in the rain, mm-hmm. just like back in the days, like waking up on the floor of a la- sleeping on the floor of a laundry room, waking up cat hair all over my face. Yeah, like that's that's the low. <laughs> that's just a long. That was long just ago. this morning too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, Klein. Really good. <laughs> Classic um, Klein. Mm-hmm. Just weird. I haven't thought about it in a, a while, but uh, I'll pick one high for now, that's which is uh, playing Arnett Coleman's music for him on Ooh. his birthday. Ooh. That's was a high. That's amazing. Ooh. Where was that? Uh, at the Walker Art Center. That was. Yeah. I don't even know how many years ago. Six, five, six years ago, maybe probably more than that. Actually, I don't know, but yeah, that's a high. Yeah, any <laughs> high or low for you? Dude, so many, uh, so many of both. So many highs, so many lows. Mm-hmm. Um, with with, it, you know, in Edward Sharp, we have kind of a lot of highs because those shows are really religious for a lot of people, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it can get like really amazing moments can happen, but like, not to go into, you know, long long stories, but 
there was one recently that was really cool that not not in that band, but um, uh, Glenn Hansard came to town, the Irish singer, and I heard he was in LA, and I, I just hit him up. I was like, but you know, we should get together, and he's like, oh, I'm playing a gig tonight. You should come down. And the backstory is that. Growing up there in L.A., I would go see the L.A. Philharmonic when I was like, you know, four all the way to present day, like periodically. Mm -hmm. And so when Disney Hall was built, that's that's a place I'd never played. I played most rooms, but, you know, where their their house, which is a kind of an amazing 360 concert hall. So we played this gig at Largo and he just wanted me to play on everything. I played through the whole set. It was amazing. And it was a small band. It was just like him and his piano player. He had a bass player. He had Leonard Cohen's lute player and me. <laughs> And I know a single song, and he was like, man, you gotta change your flight and come play these shows at Disney Hall. The LA Philharmonic was there. Mm -hmm. They were wow. playing the first set. And it's again, you know, sold out, people in the round, and like some, you know, heroes in the audience, like Beck was there, and, and David Campbell was a friend of mine, his dad, that was conducting the orchestra. Mm -hmm. wow. And so I made it through three sets on two nights with, on, on that stage, <laughs> not knowing a single song. And it was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and people awesome. were tripping, and I was getting praise from people that were like that. I had I had so much, you know, altitude for. But you know, when I, a high for me is when I go into something that I feel like is certain failure because I'm just so, you know, I, I can't hang, and then I like survive it. Yeah, yeah. and that's I yeah. come home just yeah. floating. Yeah. yeah, you have to like leave your body in those moments just yeah. to kind of relax, uh -huh. <laughs> play, and yeah, he, untap yeah. some power that you know you don't have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Any lows? Any lows oh, you want to mention? <laughs> you can abstain, it's okay. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't make me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> the first Europe tour? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Very first one. It's a one. long story. A lot of details. Yeah. Yeah. Lost a lot of good men out there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So we got Mike Lewis and his saxophone. Saxophone. Tenor sax? Tenor saxophone. And you play alto sax also. I do. And alto soprano and all the, all the sax. All of, yeah, I don't own all of them, but but I presume I could probably pick them up and figure yeah, it out. Yeah, figure it out. Um, and Mike Wise, what do we got going on? So we've got the Origin mm -hmm. up front. Yeah. Pretty close on him. And then we've got two other ones, uh, we've got two spirits, in Omni actually. In Omni, okay. One kind of in the corner over here, not in the bathroom, but kind of outside of it, and then one even further away over here. And what's the point of doing so, that? So the idea was um, to kind of mimic the Tony Visconti, David Bowie Heroes vocal oh, trick. Vocals, yeah, yeah. Where they have the further mics kind of gated to where they only trigger or open up whenever you mm -hmm. blow real hard. Awesome. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. Sounds really interesting. That sounds fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to it. Thank <laughs> you. 
some mistakes you guys ex you guys see uh, engineers making like with your horn? Oof. You know? We'll reframe. We'll reframe. Reframe that question. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah, the yeah, mistake? Yeah, yeah. I'm What's the mistake? Yeah. 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 Uh, All our engineer friends are just like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, what, what, are, what? Yeah. Don't worry, we'll just get a name in the, the Google tag, so it won't come up. But. Yeah, what's, can you, what's can you bleep one? out the names yeah, of the people we'll that were about the name. to roll? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to name the person, just what's a common mistake you see someone make with miking your horn? Miking it too close. Across the board, miking it too close. Oh, yeah. That's one. Yeah. Uh, just, I think just like not taking a, a second to figure out what it's going to be before really yeah, getting into the mic setup. That's a better, that's more what I was trying to say, I guess. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's just like, just what like, am I doing? Am I playing quiet? If I'm playing quiet, then pull the mic up. If I'm not playing quiet, or maybe push the mic back. Yeah. Or just like trying to figure out what the song's gonna sound like. Is it supposed to sound real crispy and brassy? Mm -hmm. Then that's a different sound than yeah. a, a smoky kind of dark sound. So just figuring out what you're gonna do before getting deep into the weeds of setting things up. Yeah. You know, like what am you know, what am I here for? Yeah. Yeah. I had a guy that used to uh, <clears throat> a middle bunch of records with with a cat who used to um stand out in front of me and just have me play for a while and he would just move around and use his microphone <laughs> to see what that sounded like wow. so that he had like you know he'd just move to different areas like like he'd get six feet away mm -hmm. or he'd get like right up close and he'd get in closer to the stack of the keys or get right on the bell or whatever and then he would set up like you know three sometimes four mics in different spots just to try to catch those sounds and then he would explain to me what he was hearing and like you know mm -hmm. because i can't hear what he's hearing you yeah, know yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. that's the other part you know mm -hmm. so it's like you know I, th I think just taking the time you know what i mean if there's yeah. a number one mistake or whatever it's just like being in a big and hurry to you know what i mean it's like yeah. just just take a minute a hurry. you know that's it try to, yeah being too throw and go time is money you know so yeah. that ends up having weird consequences yeah. Of just yeah. like moving too quick, too quick in general. Yeah. What was the first time you guys recorded music? Like that first time I recorded music, I was fourteen. Hmm. It was really bad. So what about you? What was your first experience recording? First experience recording was uh, I was twelve. Mm -hmm. I was in sixth grade, and uh, like my, my dad was a musician, so he uh, there was some school project, something or other, where like uh, in a class where like. Kids either had to write a song or a, or a, a poem or something like that, you know, and and uh, and so I opted for a song, and uh, and and my dad surprised me and basically like like as soon as he found out about the project, then he he uh, he booked a proper studio with his buddy that you know like so awesome. so I went by myself with my dad and I don't remember if we used like Jamie Aversold or something like that sure. for, the, for the rhythm section, but mm -hmm. wrote a blues song about how I didn't want to do it and just really <laughs> like. Whatever it was ridiculously embarrassing and, and uh, but I mean also like you know whatever proper professional studio with my dad helping out who knew what yeah. he was doing and it, so it's like it came in and it's like it sounded as good as that was gonna sound like really pristine awesome. like vocals I sang on it and what? played a saxophone solo yeah it's great I, I don't, I don't even know is that? Is that's a great question <laughs> it's got it's got to be around somewhere yeah, yeah I, I, I know it's not gone he wouldn't he wouldn't have gotten rid of that's it that's amazing but, but yeah. Were you singing a blues? Yeah, yeah, I wrote words and you wrote words and, yeah. <laughs> and took yeah. solos between yeah. your verses. Yeah, I took a oh, solo so on good. it. I think I maybe my dad did right too now. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that sounds awesome. It was That's amazing. Was... Do you guys prefer playing live or you prefer being in the studio? Oh, I love them both. Well, it's two very, very yeah. Different well, I just love them both. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really have to choose. Yeah, you yeah, know, they're just like, wildly different. Mm -hmm. Live, I'll play. I'll play a lot louder than mm -hmm. I'll ever play in the studio. Like yeah. microphones, can, I've never played as loud as I will outside totally. at a festival. And I've never played that loud in the studio. I'm trying to think if I've ever had a chance to play as loud as I can, <laughs> like in the studio, probably not. I've done it by yeah. design. Yeah. Like I've set up like a mic in a hallway or like very distantly and then just like screamed through the instrument from a different room just to yeah. get the energy but not the, Response, you know, like mm -hmm. of of the mic being close on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. man, I don't, I don't think I play that loud to begin with. You know, <laughs> so like, especially for a trumpet player, trumpet players tend to play pretty loud. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but I when I was learning to play, my sister was always she hated hearing me practice. She lived upstairs. And I had like a kind of a basement room, and so I think I figured out that that's that's wise because I would have to play so quietly to not wake her up, so she didn't mm -hmm. actually know. Wow, you know, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah that's cool. 
Yeah. Yeah, you have to learn how to play soft. That's the whole thing. And I can get a lot more character out of playing softly than if I'm playing loud and just max it all out. And, mm -hmm. You know, what's a what's a an album or a take or a horn sound that sounds perfect to you guys? Like sets a standard in your mind for like an amazing recording. <sighs> That's tough. Yeah, a lot of different ones. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure there are a ton. I can think. I, I mean, the Rocky soundtrack was one of my big things that I loved. I would check that CD out from the library. And listen to those those brass players. I always thought that Bill Conti stuff was amazing. And then um, what else did I check out? I would check out lots of soundtracks: Superman soundtrack, Indy Jana Jones soundtrack, and then I think Earth, Wind, and Fire's horn sound. Oh, yeah. In my opinion, that the greatest big. brass section in the history of music: the Phoenix yeah. Brass. Do you Earth still do you still feel that way now about Earth, Wind, and Fire? That, that they're the greatest brass section. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But they're, they're, I'll, like, I'll go with that. No con yeah. I can't, I'm trying to think of one better. And, oh man! Yeah, you know, at me. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. fired. Greatest <laughs> brass section. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Stuart? Oh man! I mean, the first, the first CDs I ever went and bought. Were, you know, it was like Warehouse Records back when that existed. <laughs> yeah. And they had the long box, <laughs> and I bought Kind of Blue by mm -hmm. Miles, and I bought uh, Blue Light Red Light by Harry Connick Jr. Mm -hmm. and. and Pearl Jam's tent, which obviously yeah. didn't have any horns so on it. Sure. I was like, I don't know the horn section on the yeah. Pearl Jam record. <laughs> no, not so much. But I bought them at the same time. And yeah. I went and I just, uh -huh. I just ate that up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. then later with um, Kind of Blue, that whole, like, everything was so dark and velvety. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. every every note was was sung. So Miles was playing on that mute. but the, And that mute often records really bright and tinny. Like, you can't just mm -hmm. stick a normal condenser mic in front of a Harmon mute and get the sound like anything. So there, you know, but uh, like everything, the sax solos, the, you know, Coltrane and Cannonball playing on that was just like, yeah, that was osmosis. I just loved that, ate it up. And then the Harry Connick Jr. record is incredible. Oh, the arrangements, the, the big players band, and yeah, that yeah. particular, mm -hmm. that's his best record that I've ever heard. Yeah. And I'm not a huge fan, uh -huh. but that record, the big band sounds unbelievable. And it was Roger Ingram playing lead trumpet, I believe. Ooh, yeah. Who then later, when I was 16, and I went and I saw, went to Marsalis, came to town with the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra, mm -hmm. and did his Blood on the Fields, his operetta about slavery that won him a Pulitzer Prize. And Roger Ingram was playing lead trumpet in that too. And that band, the I mean, the brass blend was unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They Lincoln's, didn't overdo it. There was three of each too. It was like yeah. three, three trumpets, three bones, maybe four saxes. Huh. It was just so thick, mm -hmm. so dark. Yeah. 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 But yeah, no, we have trombone. Um, Brad, tell us about the mic setup we have. So we've got the Spirit up close. It's in figure eight to get a little bit of the room. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the Starlights in a pair, an XY pair at the back, a little further away. Right. With the uh, vintage setting. Gotcha. So you're going to get a bunch of air from the room. And yep. then you're going to also get the direct from up front. Yep. Awesome. Well, cool. Look forward to hearing it. Let's hear it. Sweet. So 
So what's something non-musical uh, that's made you a better player? Mm, I would say for me, it was my, my mom teaching me how to cook was one. Just like mm. learning how to relax and yeah. pay attention. Don't leave the room. You know, one thing at a time and like take some care in what you're doing. And I would also say with us uh, was sports too, mm -hmm. which is like the idea of like you are you are no good. And this guy is way better than you, so you better <laughs> practice. Because like this is a different. We have talking to each other. Like you know, yeah, artists yeah. have different ways. Oh, you're gonna get. You're gonna make it. You're gonna get. And like sports is just like you're. You're That's gonna not play. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna sit on the bench and yeah. not play unless you get better. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. up to you. You need to run more. <laughs> you need to lift more weights. Yeah. You need to learn the plays. And yeah, it's no like. No wonder I didn't play more sports. Yeah. So like yeah, sports <laughs> is definitely like. Gets you used to learning how to learn and getting being okay with like sucking real bad until mm. you figure it out. Mm. You know, mm. yeah. yeah. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. I, for me, I think um, learning how to learn how to be a better like listener, like to, almost just on a level of just like student of humanity or something you know yeah. I and mean? just like like figuring out i mean i was an only child so that was a real struggle for me for a while like yeah. was figuring out how to how to exist in a social context and mm -hmm. and like you know and i was so sure i had this great way of doing anything you know what i yeah. mean because that's what you do when you're alone is you just you figure you, it out you yeah you just do yeah. a bunch of shit by yourself and you come up with these ways that you think are so cool and um so yeah when i at points at which i had opportunities and started to realize that like like everybody's got something they like you know yeah. like that they really like some way of doing something or something they're really genuinely interested in you know mm -hmm. like um I, I, th I think just trying to meet people where they live and be a good listener and take on those those inspirations mm -hmm. you know i don't know yeah no, that's great mm -hmm. i th <laughs> we keep going in order yeah i think um I think empathy. Like I, I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly sensitive person. I've been told, you know, and if I, uh, I've been told. I don't get it. But you know, really feeling like what people are experiencing, um, like I can really feel that, mm. you know. And if, even if I don't agree with them, I can kind of, you know, try to see how they are seeing it or how they're feeling it. And mm -hmm. as horns, you know, we we're decorative usually. You know, yeah. something that you put on top or in response or whatever. So, and also the way that I, I play usually, or at least what I'm stronger at, I think, you know, I've is um, more in the, in the colors, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, th I think by, uh, by really, by that, by like really like absorbing and, and feeling everything, like I actually can use that. So then when I'm, you know, like when I'm playing a whole set of music with somebody's music that I don't know, and it's actually can be kind of my wheelhouse, you know, because I, I can process that stuff pretty yeah. quickly, as long as it's not too complicated harmonically, where I have to think about it a lot, you know? Yeah, I think that's good to know and good to hear players talk about it, because a lot of people uh, think it's all about the notes and think it's all about the technique. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's stuff like, yeah, it's, it's like the price of entry, but all this other stuff is like what elevates someone's playing, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah, Fundamental stuff yeah. is very important. I think yeah. like sometimes it gets lost in the wash when people do start kind of talking like that when they aren't good though. Mm -hmm. Like you need, like being how you are and I guess we're all kind of like how you described mm -hmm. as sensitive and keeping track of things and sometimes the just boringness of oh, yeah, scale work, learning how yeah. to actually That's something play. we haven't covered, man. But yeah, yeah just to be able to get horns on a level, not yeah. so much saxophone, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little easier. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah right. you can just like slump over and yeah, like just yeah, kind of back over horns. Yeah, yeah. like, just can't, yeah. You kind of like pull it over to the side <laughs> and it's <just> brass. <laughs> That's like, you know, playing brass, man. You got to do a whole difficult. bunch of boring just to yeah. kind of like be at zero. And that, yeah. getting that to not, you know, make you so frustrated you it, still it, want to play a, per, a perfect mm -hmm. example is when you're in high school mm -hmm. if you're in high school you can learn how to play a weezer song on a guitar but a high school kid can barely play anything on a brass instrument they can yeah, barely yeah. Pl they're playing hot cross buns and struggling <laughs> let alone try and then you're trying to like play with a guitar player and they're playing in the key of e or a or d and like i don't know my e scale 
You know, yeah. and it's like, I only know the B flat scale. It's <laughs> literally a tri tone away from where yeah, my arm the lives. Hard, the worst yeah. scale to learn to try yeah. to play the guitar players. But uh, yeah, I think yeah, there's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it's a physical instrument, which yeah, yeah. I mean, like just just to be able to produce a sound. You know, some people are just gifted. They can, you yeah. know, yeah. they can play jazz, classical, whatever, and, you know. No biggie. No biggie. Mm -hmm. But yeah, long tones and flexibilities and that. And that. Like, oh my God. Yeah. So much boring lots stuff. And lots and lots of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can lots cut all that out because it really just... is like, it's a drag. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> no. don't cut it out. Don't cut long that out. Long and answer. <laughs> fun setup looks like we have um, you're going through an effects pedal board mm -hmm. um, do you want to give us a vague idea of the kind of effects you're using uh, yeah I've got some pitch shifters I have the trying the Mellotron thing out which is kind of cool a couple settings and then those are electro harmonics type things the Mellotron I've, I've got an Empress delay mm -hmm. echo, echo system this eventide mixing link is how I get um, uh, microphones into the pedals. So it's like a reamp kind yeah, of Yeah, it's basically yeah, a reamp. Yeah. You know, not everybody likes it. You can't just put a mic straight into pedals, but I don't know. I like it. And Brad, on the microphones we have the Aston Starlight is getting his dry signal and throwing it through two bass amps. Mm -hmm. uh, That's going, going the... into all these pedals from the Starlight. Okay, so it's going Starlight on which setting? On the, it's the modern setting. On the modern setting, but the sound's getting colored by the pedal board. So. We're going starlight into the pedal board, pedal board into two, ba two bass amps, and then those are being mic'd by two Aston Origins. And then we have an Aston Spirit on cardioid yep. to just get the dry room sound, natural horn sound. And it's, uh, I mean, how far away is this, do you think? Like, what, how, you know, how, how far away do you usually like to be when you're doing this kind of thing? Me? Yeah. I mean, that looks pretty good. You it know? might be a little close, closer than normal, but... Could be. It depends on the room, too. Sometimes... Well, you when know, you're doing the effects thing to color it, too, you want to get in closer. I usually put the effects that. mic pretty close. Yeah. You know, to kind of cut down on what else it might be listening to. Right. But I'm... That's kind of cool, because you could sort of mix yourself, almost, with... Yeah. Which is good what I do, anyway, because I, I play really dynamically, so... Right. I, I don't like it when front of house is turning me way down. I'd rather the left right, and Right, like you can be emotive can, with how Then I can back off. And, yeah. Very cool, let's see what it sounds like. Cool. <laughs>
Stop for a second, eat some salvo oil.